welcome to lecture 3 of module 6 in this module we have been discussing on condensation and boiling heat transfer and last couple of lectures we have discussed on condensation heat transfer phenomena now today and in the next lecture this couple of lectures we will be discussing on boiling heat transfer phenomena and as we know that both uh, boiling and condensation uh, they are related to phase change operations and they have a significant industrial importance practical importance particularly from the uh, chemical engineering point of view okay so today's lecture we are going to discuss uh, on uh, fundamentals of boiling phenomena Okay. So, as we have discussed uh, that boiling and condensation both are phase transfer phenomena and in case of boiling uh, the phase transfer uh, leads to uh, conversion from a liquid phase to the vapor phase that we uh, all know. Now, what happens that boiling is uh, very very uh, uh, practically important or significant uh, from chemical engineering point of view like we know that distillation column is uh, one uh, uh, very common uh, separation equipment from, from chemical engineers point of view and in the distillation column we need to have a reboiler unit where the liquid is vaporized. Okay. So, the applications of uh, boiling heat transfer you can see that if we try to see there are several applications as I told first one is we can say the reboiler in the distillation column. Then many a times we need to have high pressure steam, high pressure steam generation as we understand that, uh, that at atmospheric pressure uh, water boils at 100 degree centigrade which is the boiling point of pure water. Now, what happens is many a times we need to increase the pressure and then and, and boil water to get high pressure steam. So, the temperature of that steam will be saturated steam at that high pressure will be much higher than 100 degree centigrade and this high pressure steam which is saturated steam which is at a very high temperature is many a times used for heating up certain fluid. Now, this fluids heating up of the certain fluid is very much necessary for many industrial operations like many reactors when we need to have some reactions to take place then that feed may be requiring to have some elevated temperature. Similarly, like in, even in the distillation column itself the feed may be that available feed may be at a lower temperature we may have to increase the temperature of the uh, feed and then uh, then we have to uh, put into the uh, distillation unit. So, like that so application of uh, high pressure steam is very wide in case of chemical engineering point of view and uh, this high pressure steam generation is nothing but uh, by use of a boiling phenomena and boiling heat transfer. So, we need to have a reboiler unit designed for high pressure uh, steam generation. Okay. Then many a times we required uh, that the reactant should be in the vapor form in case of a reactor. So, reactants in a reactor. So, many a times we see as I told that the reactants needs to be in vapor form and then it is placed into the reactor. Now, how to get that uh, the vapor of the reactant, the reactant initially may be at in the in a liquid form and then it is to be vaporized. So, the boiling does not mean that it will be only for water, the boiling can happen to any other solvent of interest and they, the temperature may be depending upon the relative volatility uh, sorry depending upon the volatility of the uh, particular uh, solvent. So, if the solvent is highly volatile then or that more volatile than uh, water then that boiling temperature will be lower than water boiling temperature and at that same pressure conditions and if the volatility of the uh, solvent is less compared to water then it requires higher temperature for it to be boiled 
at the same pressure condition. So, we should understand uh, that uh, boiling is boiling is a very important phenomena from uh, uh, in, uh, from engineering aspect from uh, industrial importance and uh, boiling heat transfer is because of that reason of equally important to us and we should learn how the boiling phenomena take place and what kind of uh, relationships are used to evaluate the value of uh, heat transfer uh, due to boiling. Okay. Now, we know that uh, how the boiling takes place, we will now in this lecture we will try to concentrate on uh, some basic mechanisms and the concepts of uh, 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 boiling phenomena. Now, what happens is that when is a surface uh, is immersed in a liquid, then what happens and the surface is heated. And so, surface temperature will be higher than the temperature of the uh, uh, liquid and then the liquid will uh, take up uh, some point of time the liquid will uh, will go on heated go, will be heated and then after some point of time uh, it will start boiling. Now, this boiling phenomena can be uh, divided into two parts one is called pool boiling another is forced convection boiling. Okay. Now, in case of pool boiling we can understand that is a liquid pool, pool of liquid is there which is you can consider as a, as a stagnant uh, uh, liquid is there and, and this uh, in the liquid inside the liquid there is a surface which is heated up and uh, because of that heating phenomena that uh, 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 liquid starts boiling. Thus, this is simply called as the pool boiling and another one is called forced convection boiling under that situation uh, uh, what happens that uh, the uh, there is a motion that is being given by some external pump or external energy is being placed. So, that the material or the fluid or the liquid while it is boiling it moves along. So, it is called forced convection boiling. So, it is uh, here it is that the liquid does not remain as a stagnant liquid it, it, it is in the under moving condition or the boiling medium is basically is a move in under moving condition that is why it is called forced convection boiling. Now, in the pool boiling we can say that uh, this is also can be called up that uh, one case is sub cooled or local boiling. And another case is called saturated or bulk boiling. When we say about the sub cooled or local boiling, that means if the temperature of the liquid is below the saturation temperature, if the temperature of the liquid is below the saturation temperature, then it is called sub cooled or local boiling. That means what is happening that boiling starts and then after that. Uh, uh, again uh, that uh, vapor uh, boil uh, bubbles forms and then again it is collapsed. So, this is called uh, sub cooled or local boiling and then saturated or bulk boiling that means in this case the saturation temperature of the liquid is equal to the or more than, uh, 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 than, than the boiling temperature of the liquid. So, it is all the saturation temperature of the liquid. So, that is why it is called the saturated boiling or bulk boiling we will see that. So, what happens is when a surface is heated in case of, so our main discussions would be at present uh, would be based on this pool boiling phenomena. In the pool boiling phenomena what happens is that as we discussed there is a stagnant, flu, uh, stagnant fluid, fluid means liquid here and there is a surface and if the surface is heated then what happens? Uh, that initially the that means the surface is of uh, higher temperature than the liquid over there. So, this is called the excess temperature. So, surface has got some excess temperature if we can say that this excess temperature as uh, T w minus T saturation is called T e is the excess temperature T w is the wall temperature and T saturation is the uh, b, 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 saturation temperature of the liquid 
liquid uh, saturated liquid temperature of the saturated liquid saturated liquid means the liquid at its boil point uh, boiling point or uh, uh, that's called saturated liquid similarly the uh, vapor in equilibrium with the saturated liquid is called the saturated vapor and that expected temperature of the saturated vapor will be is in equilibrium of the uh, temperature of the saturated liquid that means they are more or less the same same okay now what happens is that when we have to have uh, some kind of boiling phenomena to start so we need to have some excess energy excess temperature uh, for this wall for this uh, wall of the surface so if we maintain little excess then what happens that uh, immediate uh, the liquid layer immediate vicinity they get heated up and then uh, th there is no formation of the bubbles being formed the only thing what happens is that uh, 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 but there will be some uh, in most of the uh, times there, uh, that uh, that in that situation if the T is very small then uh, vapor will come up and uh, heat transfer will be in the form of vapor e evaporation and there will be not formation of any bubbles. Now once we go on increasing the temperature little bit then what will happen that uh, there will be a bubble formation on the surface minute bubble formation fine bubble formations will be there on the surface and then these bubbles will try to go up. But it cannot go much uh, upward because uh, that subsequent layers in the upward directions uh, there will be a condensation uh, the, the temperature will be low of the liquid temperature will be low and therefore the bubbles there will be condensation and then the bubble will collapse and then what happens if you maintain the further temperature uh, further uh, difference in temperature then what will happen that uh, the bu more bubbles will start forming and they will try to uh, cover up the whole liquid and then they will come they will rise till the uh, surface uh, free surface of the liquid free surface of the liquid means the surface of the liquid which is in uh, contact with the uh, atmosphere so free surface of the liquid they will come and there they will burst so this way the bubbles will come and then if we do uh, further heating uh, there can be there could be a formation of uh, 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 films due to the uh, breakages and coalescence of the bubbles so these things we are going to discuss with the help of uh, a, a curve that is called boiling curve. So, boiling curve is a curve uh, that is very important thing for us that boiling curve and this boiling curve is being studied uh, in case of a pool boiling phenomena. It is that uh, a curve that represents that uh, variations of heat flux versus excess temperature. So, how the heat flux or sometimes it is written as heat transfer coefficient that variation of heat transfer coefficient with excess temperature as we discussed excess temperature is the differential temperature between the surface and the saturation temperature of the liquid uh, sorry uh, temperature of the saturated liquid. So, the difference temp is the excess temperature and that uh, boiling curve is a plot of uh, uh, heat, uh, heat transfer coefficient and a logarithm of logarithmic values of the heat transfer coefficient uh, versus the excess temperature. And we will see that in the boiling curve there are uh, various regimes are there and these regimes have, to have got a physical lot of physical significance here in this in this figure uh, 1 we can see this the boiling curve and in this boiling curve there are lot of regimes are there we can see that uh, they are classified into regime 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 there are 6 regimes and we will see there that it is a log of heat transfer coefficient versus that excess temperature that is being plotted and we see that and when the excess temperature is less uh, then, then there is a different type of behavior and gradually if we go ahead then uh, 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 the behavior is little different. Now, if we see from the figure here in the figure 2 here that we can understand the case 1 is a phenomena that is called. So, if we see that regime 1 it is a it is a phenom it is a it is a region uh, in the boiling curve it is called uh, it is also called as that free convection uh, or interfacial evaporation regi region interfacial evaporation region. Now, what happens in this region salient features of this region is that T e uh, the excess temperature is nearly uh, uh, 
maximum of 2 degree centigrade the excess temperature is though in the pre, in the figure it is uh, plotted in terms of degree fahrenheit they are very close to each other because of considering the range of these uh, 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 temperature excess temperature so this is in a very much lower range it is in log scale so excess temperature uh, is within this 2 degree centigrade in case of interfacial evaporation region and then what happens in this region is and this region is valid we can see from the figure that is from A to B in this region uh, this is valid and you can see that in the straight line straight line means the heat, heat transfer uh, coefficient is increasing like a, a linear manner and uh, this is a region as we said that it is the mostly the free convection heat transfer takes place. So, free convection phenomena is prevalent over here and uh, heat transfer coefficients value can be calculated using correlations related to free convection heat transfer. So, what is happening in this case as we have discussed uh, and we have shown in this figure. Uh, so, in the figure 1 the first figure if you see uh, in the figure 2 figure 2 and the first one if you see that there will be some uh, the uh, vapor formation will be there and these vapors will go up because of uh, density differences the vapors will go up there is no formation of the bubbles at this particular moment and what happens that uh, liquid uh, elements coming in contact with the surface they are getting heated up and they are be becoming lighter and they will try to go upward and this is the situation that happens and in this case uh, in this case the motion of the fluid is due to free convection and therefore uh, it is the free convection heat transfer that is prevalent over here another point we should say that the hot liquid vaporizes only at the free top surface. That means, what we can uh, uh, so therefore, it is called interfacial evaporation region because at the top surface and uh, atmosphere there is an interface in that interface uh, the evaporation takes place this is viewed like this way. Now, then comes the region 2. And in region 1, we, we can say that it is uh, from A to point A to B okay, that we can see from the curve is from A to B. Now, from B to D actually, I will say that uh, uh, if we say region 2 and 3, they cover up uh, from B through C to D. So, this is what is happening. Now, actually there are two parts uh, region 2 is 2 indicates B C and 3 indicates uh, C to D. Okay. This are the two regions. Now, what is happening if, if we can if we see this that uh, region 2 and 3 that is from B through, uh, through C to D uh, this whole part is called as nucleate uh, boiling region. This is called nucleation or nucleate boiling region. Okay. Now, what happens is for region 2 that means from B to C. In this case, what happens that bubble starts forming on the surface and that is called a nucleation. So, nucleation starts, but 
uh, the bubbles cannot reach to the surfaces and here the temperature difference. So, T is is nearly uh, 2 to 6 degree centigrade and here bubbles begin to form, but cannot reach the surface, free surface. So, we can say that uh, at point B is the onset of nucleation, point B is onset of nucleation onset of nucleation then uh, if we just go on then if we try to see for region 3 here it is from uh, C to D. So, if we go back again to the picture what we will see here that for B to C is the second picture very few bubbles are formed very few bubbles are formed because the temperature is not uh, that much sufficient for so many bubbles to form and then these bubbles also cannot go till the surface because what is happening uh, the bubbles will start growing till certain extent and then after that layer of the liquid layer of the liquid is not uh, 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 or rather is at lower temperature. So, then what will happen the bubbles collapse, okay. but the case 3 is the situation when the bubbles will go upward. So, here the bubbles are going upward and then bubble reaches to the surface, free surface and so we can say that from C to 3 here the T E is uh, nearly 7 degree centigrade uh, to 35 degree centigrade, this is a rough estimate of that and here uh, bubbles are generated and bubbles are formed rapidly. rapidly and vigorously okay, and they reach the free surface. Then what happens that near point D, near point D uh, that means when the temperature is when T excess is nearly equal to 35 degree centigrade or so, then what happens the bubble starts uh, uh, a lot of activities doing lot of activities there will be lot of uh, uh, breakage and coalescence of the bubbles. So, breakage of bubbles take place. Anyway, before we go to that part, what we can see is that in this, uh, we can see that because of the formation of, because of this formation of the uh, bubbles, we can see that uh, there is almost uh, a sharp increase, sharp increase in the heat transfer coefficient. So, we can see that there is a sharp increase in the heat transfer coefficient. Initially, the heat transfer coefficient increases that not that sharp and later on in the second phase that means in the region 3 when there is a vigorous boiling is taking place that means lots of bubbles are being formed and so bubbles are carrying the energy to the top, bubbles are carrying the energy to the top, top and therefore they are increasing the heat transfer coefficient and rate of heat transfer is also increased like anything. So, this is of most important this region. Uh, this nucleate boiling region is of uh, most important uh, use for uh, industrial applications and because here the heat transfer uh, rate is uh, very high, heat transfer coefficient also very high and nucleation boiling region is therefore, is very much important. Now, if we further go, if we further go on increasing the temperature, if we further go on increasing the temperature we are reaching to uh, region 4 that means, in the region 4 if I say what happens that because of the bubbles formation is very vigorous then be lot of uh, breakage and coalescence of the bubbles and that lead to formation of films, 
formation of more increase or rather further increase in T e excess temperature. So, what will happen that formation of film over the surface hot surface. Now, the question is that this formation of the film is it is a momentary momentary uh, formation of film film of vapor. Okay. That means, what is that sometimes the film appear and then again disappear leaving a free surface. for bubble formation. So, what does it mean? It means that we have a surface and on the surface there are lot of bubble formations and because the more number of bubbles, so bubbles may coalesce and give a film and then fill this film gets heated up, they go upward leaving the free surface, again new film, again a lot of new bubbles then film like that it happens and therefore, what happens in the boiling curve is that heat transfer uh, rate is gradually decreased, it is not that suddenly it is decreased because what is happening? That film of the vapor is acting as a blanket, but this blanket is not a permanent blanket, it is a temporary blanket and that offers some amount of heat transfer resistance, but this heat transfer resistance is not uh, is persisting for a continuously longer time. So, what happens is therefore, this region is called uh, this region is called film boiling region, but it is called uh, partial nucleate or transition boiling. Or transition boiling. Actually, it is it is a part of film boiling region. Okay. So, this is of very important uh, 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 phenomena. So, film boiling region is uh, the region that is coming after all which is called the stable film boiling. So, region 5 it is. Uh, so, region 4 is uh, between D to E and region 5 is between E and F and here in this region. So, little increase in T E makes a stable film acting as blanket stable and permanent blanket of vapor on the hot surface. Okay. And we know the thermal conductivity of the vapor is poor and therefore, it acts it acts as a uh, strong uh, resistance for heat transfer and therefore, we can see uh, there is a, a drastic reduction uh, in the heat transfer coefficient value and this is the region which is called um, stable fill boiling region and in this region uh, heat transfer coefficient uh, is drastically reduced. So, we can say in this region heat transfer coefficient is drastically reduced. Now, if we go to region 6, 
in this region what happens again we see there is a sharp rise of heat transfer coefficient or alternately the heat transfer or heat flux heat flux rate I am sorry heat flux itself is the rate. So, heat flux or alternately the heat flux half rise in the heat flux and this is happening. Uh, now, why this is happening? If we see the temperature range in this case in this case if we again go back to the boiling curve if you see the temperature range it is somewhere more than 100,000 degree Fahrenheit or so. So, so, huge temperature. So, delta T is a very high and at that condition what we expect is T is very high. So, what we expect is a come radiation to come into picture. So, we expect radiation becomes a significant mechanism of heat transfer. Okay. So, these things will be discussed we will be discussing little later regarding the radiation heat transfer we will be discussing sometimes later uh, we will discuss uh, in details on radiation. However, in this case uh, so radiation plus boiling so it is a combined phenomena that makes so basically it is a combined phenomena that makes the heat transfer faster. Then question comes, should we operate at this temperature? No, we, we will try to avoid operate at this temperature because there is a problem that many a times come which is called boiling crisis. So, boiling crisis is a situation when due to excessive temperature difference between the surface and uh, surface and the liquid uh, it may happen the surface may get melted surface may melt down may get melted or burnt out and due to large excess temperature T and then this phenomena is called a uh, boiling crisis. So, we should try to avoid reaching such kind of a uh, crisis situations. So, what has to be done? Our target and then on another thing we should see that there is many a times uh, uncontrolled heating may lead somebody to reach from point D to point G. So, uncontrolled heating, so little bit of or a rapid heating, so rapid change in excess temperature may lead to formation of a situation of boiling crisis or a situation of or reaching a, a, a level of uh, uh, regime 6 that is a highly possibility. So, therefore, we have to be very careful while designing a while in de designing a uh, reboiler or boiling situation uh, bo uh, or boiler design we have to be careful that it never goes for uh, this regime 6 or it never uh, goes for any boiling crisis situation. And as I told you there is a quick jump from point D to point G may take place and this is happened have this happens due to uncontrolled heating that may uh, lead to uncontrolled increase in the excessive uh, excess temperature. Therefore, we should always try to constrain ourselves to in case of boiling situation constrain ourselves little lower than the values of temperature excess temperature compared uh, at D. So, we have got some excess temperature at point D. So, we should constrain ourselves 
at value of e which is little lower than the value of t e at point d. Okay. So, that is called the operating temperature of the excess operating excess temperature that we can say. Now, while discussing these things uh, regarding this boiling. So, we have uh, found out that based possible operating region for boiling is the nucleate boiling region with T e less than the T e for point D to reach. So, this is to avoid uh, boiling crisis phenomena and safety from having uh, uncontrolled heating that may lead to switching from point D to point G. Okay. Now, in this context, we will discuss a phenomena that is called Lydon frost phenomena. So, Lydon frost phenomena, it is it's, it's being it is a phenomena that is being observed by Lydon frost in 1756 observed in 1756. What is this phenomena? Is the phenomena is something like that like say if a if a vapor droplet sorry if a if a, if a water droplet falls on a hot surface then what happens? Uh, some kind of dancing phenomena uh, that that takes place. That means, the uh, if a uh, water droplet falls on a hot surface, then it bounces up and down for some times and then vanishes. So, this is called a dancing phenomena for the bubbles, I am sorry for the droplet. Again, I am repeating. So, if we have a water droplet that is falling from uh, that falling on a hot surface, then there is a possibility that uh, this droplet will bounce up and down for some times and then it will vanish. And this particular phenomena which is kind of dancing of the uh, droplet that takes place is called the Leiden frost phenomena. Now, what is happening actually in this case? As I told you that uh, droplet is falling on a hot surface. So, that means a considerable temperature difference is there between the droplet and the hot surface. Okay. So, considerable temperature difference is there it is something like again we can consider correlate this for the case of say drop of liquid nitrogen or liquid air or liquid air on floor. So, if incidentally if a drop of liquid nitrogen or liquid air is fallen on the floor then what is happened? then also the temperature difference will be sufficiently high, because we know that a liquid nitrogen temperature is in minus some uh, 180, 190, 190 something around that level and uh, atmospheric temperature is. So, the difference atmospheric temperature will be around 30 degree centigrade or so. So, the differential temperature will be around 200 degree centigrade or so. So, under that situation or in the previous case also suppose we have a 
liquid uh, water droplet and that is falling on a hot surface okay, again the temperature difference may be 200 or more than 200 degree centigrade under that situation we are reaching closely towards uh, uh, to a film boiling region. So, then what happens we are reaching towards film boiling region. So, what happens when the liquid droplets falls on the hot surface. Okay. So, in case of droplet of liquid nitrogen and liquid air the normal flow rate surface is the hot surface. So, when it falls on the hot surface then the liquid starts boiling and then a film is formed and that film. So, film of the vapor is formed and the film of the vapor when it is becoming more sufficiently large then what will happen there will be a some buoyancy force. Okay. So, it, it will get an uh, uh, upward thrust because of the film. So, the film gives a upward and upward thrust for the bubble, I am sorry for the droplet. Then what will happen? The droplet will come upward and then the vapor part will go and then again droplet will fall down. So, droplet size is reduced, droplet size is reduced and falls back on the surface again. Droplet side is reduced and it falls back on the surface again and again the similar blanket is formed, a similar vapor layer is formed and then again upward thrust like that. So, this phenomena continues till the droplet vanishes. Okay. So, this is what is called a leaden frost uh, uh, phenomena. Okay. This one very interesting phenomena uh, that is being observed in case of uh, and uh, in case of droplets falling on hot surface and it is uh, linked with uh, the boiling phenomena and particularly with film boiling phenomena. Okay. Now, next part is that we should have uh, some idea on this uh, hysteresis in boiling curve. So, that is already we have discussed what happens is uh, that in normal situation uh, that if this is the excess temperature already we have seen this and this is a log of uh, q dot s. So, it is heat flux at the surface q dot s is heat flux at the hot surface and T is equal to excess temperature of the hot surface. Okay. And this hysteresis phenomena is first observed by Nikiyama, Nukiyama in 1934. What is happening here as we have discussed that there is a boiling that so this is the boiling curve okay. and so this is point A then say this point say we have seen B then we have seen C then there is a point D okay. and then we have point E says F and here it is a point G. Okay. Now, what happens it is supposed to go in this route, okay, but uh, once it reaches here it goes by this route and then while coming back uh, it comes back in this route. Okay. So, this is happening the hysteresis. So, this is called the hysteresis phenomena. 
So, when we are going on heating, uh, it should for a controlled heating, for controlled heating, it, it will for controlled heating it will go by the route, it, it should follow the route uh, A, B, C, D, then E, F and G, uh, but actually it follows A, B, C, D to G and this is because of as already I was telling this uncontrolled heating. and therefore, this becomes very dangerous. So, our operation point should always be little lower than the point somewhere in this region should be our operating point because we should not go to this region. Similarly, while coming back if we are any time by any chance at point G and if we for cooling purpose for cooling it should come back uh, it comes back through the path G F C B A G F C B A in place of G F E D G F E D then C B A. So, this path is not followed. while cooling. So, this is called uh, the hysteresis operation, uh, hysteresis uh, in case of uh, uh, boiling phenomena okay. and uh, latent frost phenomena occurs at point nearly equal to D okay. and at that point that situation this uh, uh, latent frost uh, phenomena takes place. Now, now we will discuss about uh, uh, mechanism of nucleate boiling. As we told that nucleate boiling uh, can take place uh, on the surfaces and there will be a, a bubble to be formed. We can have different type of surfaces one is called say uh, three different type of surfaces all right and this is say this is not waiting surface. This we can say the partially waiting surface not weighted so rather and totally weighted surface. Okay. So, we can see that in this case the bubbles formation is like this and for partially weighted surface the because the contact angle is so this would be linear is the straight line. So, in this case uh, the relatively sorry this kind of things and in this case it will be almost a uh, contact angle is uh, no contact it is almost that covered up uh, it is partially weighted by the liquid and it is completely I should say I should draw like this uh, yeah it is a completely waiting uh, uh, liquid is completely waiting the uh, surface. Okay. So, this kind of situation that take place uh, on the surfaces and 
we know that this mechanism of nucleate boiling when the formation of the bubbles, the bubble formation in case of uh, this th uh, of these three naturally we will be preferring this is more preferred because we know that a liquid is covering almost all the surfaces here some amount of surface is covered by the vapor and we know the heat transfer coefficient for the vapor is uh, lower than the liquid. So, in this case more vapor because here will in this case the heat transfer uh, uh, rate will be faster because the liquid is directly contact with this rather than the vapor. Okay. Bubble formation is basically uh, uh, it is called nucleation and that means, the start of the bubble and then or rather I should say that nucleation nucleate boiling starts by two things that is called one is bubble formation that is called nucleation and other is called bubble growth. Okay. Now, in case of bubble formation or in case of nucleation just the bubbles are being formed there can be uh, nucleation in the liquid pool. this is called homogeneous nucleation and another can be nucleation on on surface uh, and this is called heterogeneous nucleation. So, under the heterogeneous nucleation that uh, it happens that bubbles grows uh, on the surface and it happens to the uh, uh, cavities or crevices in the surface. We can see that this is the fig this is the figure where uh, we can it says that how a, a bubble grows. So, this is the gravity on a surface. So, that will be surface roughness should be there and in that there can be some kind of kind of cavities and all that this is the cavity and this is a growing bubble and this bubble grows and gradually this is the stage before it gets detached from the surface. Now, what happens is that um, uh, we have to discuss that in case of nucleate boiling that uh, how a, a vapor or a how a bubble gets stable uh, mechanically stable and, and we will discuss what would be the uh, various uh, heat transfer correlations available to find out the values of uh, heat transfer rate in a, uh, a boiling situation and particularly our, tar our, our uh, interest would be towards the nucleate boiling situation. So, next class we will be discussing further details on uh, that behavior of the bubbles and uh, boiling phenomena. Thank you.